Good evening and welcome to Tender Loving Care. I'm the Reverend Gary Maloney and uh, I'll be filling in for Dr. Allman for the next few weeks. And uh, I invited Pastor Dan Mahaffey back with us again this evening. He was on last week's program. Welcome, Dan. Thank you, Gary. And what are we going to talk about this evening? Dan? Well, we talked a little bit about the overview of the church last right. time. And I, I think maybe we'll talk a little more specifically about what it is okay. we do um, on our, our services uh, we have three, the Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Uh -huh. um, Sunday morning, we, we always start with Sunday school. Right. Uh, at 10 o'clock, we, we have Sunday school for all ages, um, from infant all the way to, you know, like I just say, nine months to 99, 999 years. I ain't quite um, there yet. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, we, we have something for everyone, right. um, and, and we uh, use the curriculum from the Church of the Nazarene, and uh, teachers uh, who are engaged and, and, and really, uh, I believe, are living out the lessons they teach. Right. Um, so it, it's usually good discussion. Uh, the kids, I, I get a chance to kind of listen in on a lot of them. I, I go around and, and the kids are always engaged and, and learning and, and answering questions and, and, and trying to just uh, really understand what it is that they are being taught on a Sunday. Right. And I know... Uh... Every once in a while, when we don't go to Don and Pat, say that in wintertime, the weather mm -hmm. kind of holds us down. I enjoy the adult class here because you can get some interesting conversations going on. Well, absolutely. Um, and, and you hear stories. Oh, uh, yes. One, one of the great things about the, the group here is uh, when you get them going with the stories, they're always relevant, but they, they usually, you, you leave with a, a, a chuckle. Yep. Um, but uh, it's a great group of people. It's very diverse. Um, there, there's, there's a nice uh, gap in, in the ages there. So there's, but uh, our, our Sunday school teacher, he does a great job leading the class, and, 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 and it's, it's a good class. Every once in a while, I got to sit in and, right. and, and be a part of it, and so I enjoy it. I know uh, me and my wife, like we said last week, we go out to Don and Pat. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't use the Sunday school book because Don wants... Right. So we've, been, we've already went through the complete New Testament, and we're working in the Old Testament now. And we take a couple chapters a week, or maybe a chapter a week, depending on how long it is. And Don really get, and Pat really gets interested in that, mm -hmm. learning that. And uh, that's what they decided they wanted to do about three years ago. So that's what we've been doing, and they're getting along good. With well, good. It. Yeah, you, you know. And the thing for the Sunday school curriculum we use, it's not topic based yeah. in, in the Sunday morning. It's not, um, you know, for child rearing 101. Right. It, it is, it, it may have a theme, but it's always, the theme is always based upon the scriptures. Right. Um, and for the, and for each class, what's nice is they won't just jump around. So, um, I'll take the one I'm most familiar with is uh, the one my son Elijah is in. They've been doing the book of Acts and Acts, talking yeah. about Paul's journey. And, and the Sunday school teacher uh, actually built a jail cell. And to, yeah. to, so he understood what it was like to be in jail, in jail. Like, like Paul and Silas and, right. and all those. So, so it, it's really engaging. Uh, the teachers find ways to really engage. And, and, but it is, it is very much a... Um, Scripture-focused Sunday right. school is what we do here. I like Scripture-focused Sunday mm -hmm. school. It keeps you more in the Word of God. Yep. yep. I know, like I was saying, out Don and Pat's, we uh, go with this, and it really get, we get some good conversations going. Well, yeah. And I like questions, and like I tell Don, if I don't have the answer that Sunday, I say, I'll go home and look the answer up for you, and I'll bring it back to you. Yeah, I uh, taught a fifth-grade Sunday school class one time, 
And I've said, I've gotten harder questions from the fifth graders than I oh, do yes. from adults sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I've had to go and look and research to come yeah. back and give them the answer. Um, but that's, that's an exciting part. Is, um, yeah. This was before I was a pastor, so I hadn't had the, some of the training. But it, it's exciting when people, at, no matter the age, want to learn and engage with, with the scriptures. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Like you said, you're looking the answer up for them, but in the process, we might be learning something ourselves. Absolutely. Um, you know, if, if any pastor ever tells you they know everything, <laughs> they're probably yeah, not being wrong. truthful. That's right. Um, no, I, I learn something new every, every week. And I've said this in, before here at the church. I can preach in a, a certain chapter of the Bible. Maybe a year later, I go back to it, and I see something I never saw the last time. It like pops out at you. Well, I've always thought, Gary, we should preach back-to-back -back weeks on the same passage just to see how it'd be different. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And I'll tell you a little story here. My first sermon I ever preached was at the South by Academy. Pastor Sid came up to me and said, you're preaching Sunday night. Well, I was going to preach in John 3. Boy, I was excited. That morning we had a Gideon speaker come in. What did he want to preach on? John, John chapter. 3. So I changed my sermon. <laughs> And that was the worst thing this old boy ever done. Mm -hmm. Sid patted me on the shoulder and said, you've learned the lesson, haven't you? <laughs> but never change it. Nope. Because you could do a sermon, I could do one on the same. It would come out with the same idea, but presented different. Yep. It's amazing. Yeah. And then uh, we, we transitioned from our Sunday school to at 11 o'clock, we have our, our morning uh, worship time. Um, <clears throat> there we... The, the first part is, is really uh, engaging um, everybody. We, uh, we always have a call to worship, which right. is a psalm. One of the things I'm big on, as, as we said in the, the previous uh, show, was we, we do a lot of scripture reading. Yeah. Um, always start the, start the service with a psalm. Um, sometimes it's a psalm of praise, sometimes a psalm of thanksgiving, but we also sometimes do the songs of laments. Yes. Laments, um, yeah. A lot of people don't like to read those ones because they say that they, they, they brings them down, but I think if you want to get the fullness, fullness you yeah. do that. So we always start with a psalm. We, we always have a uh, learn about where we're, what's going on in the world of missions in the church. Uh, we said the church is big on missions. Yes. We always have that time. Um, and then we, we have our time of, of singing, just like every other church oh, yeah. in, in the community. Um, but interspersed in that, we have scripture reading. Yeah. Um, and, and different people will read different scriptures right. every week. And uh, it, it really... It's fun because as I sit at the piano and people are reading, I watch out in the congregation and they will listen. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's great to see people engaging God's Word um, on a weekly basis on a, and, and really taking it in. Um, and that's so important for what yep. we do. And then I know from the behind the pulpit there you can look out when you're preaching mm -hmm. see people taking notes and mm -hmm. writing stuff down or looking through their bible to see where you're at you know? absolutely um you know i i always always ahead of time in in the the bulletin have where what we're re right. preaching on that week and you could always see people they, they're not usually searching for it they they have it right they there and ready, ready to go, to go when go, we're, yeah, we're ready yeah. to go um and you know uh so then during the sermon time, um, you know, it, it's not one of those that, that we were, gonna, you were, we're here for hours upon hours. I'm not Paul. I don't keep everyone till midnight. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I think we, we've, whether Gary's preaching and I preaching or we have a, a revivalist or an evangelist in, in the pulpit, you always hear sermons that are based on Scripture. Um, I don't do a lot of topical sermons. No. Um, we don't do a lot of that, but we do biblical scripture and let the scripture speak for yep. themselves. And, and um, we, uh, we participate in the uh, sacrament of the Lord's Supper yep. pretty regularly, yep. uh, which we, um, I think, have, have learned is such an important part of, of ser service. It's, it's our response to what we've heard. Right. Um, but in, through all the, the service, I think the most important thing we do is when we pray. Pray, yes. Um, prayer is all throughout the service. It's not like we do a prayer at one point and that's the only prayer we do. It's, okay. it's all throughout. All right. And so uh, it, it's, it's funny. It sounds like a lot, yep. but by the time it's done, you're like, it's over? Yeah. We finished? 
Yeah. So uh, I, I think we do a great thing on Sunday mornings. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then uh, we go after, go home, and we all take our naps. So we have to have our naps <laughs> on Sunday afternoon. And then we right. come back on Sunday nights. That's right. Which you had mentioned uh, the last show, that it's a little different. Yeah. It's a little different service, yeah. Yeah. We do a um, lot. We, we read fr from a psalm, an Old Testament, a gospel, and a New Testament yeah. passage. And interspersed is music. Music. Um, one of the things I learned early on here was they like to sing. Yeah. Now, not all of us can sing very well, but we like it. We like it. We like it. And so we get out the hymnals on your Sunday morning music. It'll be a mixture of hymnals and right. some of the more contemporary songs you may have heard on the radio. Sunday night is strictly through the hymns. Through the hymns, yep. And um, we engage in that. So the first half is really doing scripture reading and hymns and prayer. And then, as Gary mentioned before, I, I do a devotional. Yep. Um, I try not, it's not usually as long as Sunday mornings, um, but it is still, I, it's more of a teaching, teaching than it is necessarily a sermon. Um, and then uh, we always end up with song and everything. Um, but the good thing I like is I don't read the scriptures on Sunday night. That's right. They read the scriptures on Sunday night. The congregation yeah. Um, one of the th important things for me is congregational involvement. Yeah. Um, we're not here to put on a show. I'm not here to put on a show. I'm not that entertaining. Uh, <laughs> I'm really not that entertaining. It's important. I want everyone to be involved because if it's just uh, one or two or three people doing everything, then it's not worship. Right. You know, so I, I enjoy that everyone is involved in doing and that. And I think it's good for the people because a lot of times people get saved, start, and they want to get involved. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they're like shoved to the side. Right. I believe in, if they want to get involved, give them something to do. Absolutely. You know. You know, most people don't mind reading. That's right. Um, and, and so we, we, we have about eight people we rotate through on Sunday mornings and then Sunday nights. They pick up our, our little uh, bulletin for Sunday nights, and they don't get a choice whether they read or not because I highlight the passages. And if you have the highlighted passage, you get to read. That's right. <laughs> and I usually get the ones with the uh, real long names. There. Well, you know. Yeah, I think you I, have I try to do set. That. Gary, Gary <laughs> will be here at this time. Which one is Gary going to pick up? <laughs> <laughs> You got me Sunday night. I, I did. I, I, and that was unexpected because it's usually the Old Testament passages. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then uh, we have our Wednesday night Bible study. Yeah. And that is always based upon Sunday morning's sermon right. passage. So this past Sunday, I, I preached out of Hebrews chapter 1. This one, the, you know, Wednesday night, we'll do a study. Right. Hebrews chapter 1. Um, you know, the next five weeks we're doing Hebrews. The next five weeks our Bible studies will be out of the book Hebrews. And that way, what happens is, instead of hearing the past sermon and the passage on Sunday and then not thinking about the rest of the week, we've been able to think about it a little bit and come back and talk about it a little bit more. Right. And I think it sticks with us a little bit right. better um, than just hearing it once on Sunday and right. then being done. And it's, it's a Bible study that is interactive. I ask questions and invite people to respond. Um, sometimes it'll be stories. Sometimes it'll be uh, how they understand uh, the, the, the doctrine or theology. And, right. But it, it's, it's, always, uh, it's always entertaining. It's always fun. I shouldn't say entertaining, but it's always informative. Informative, I think is a better yeah. word than entertaining. But it's fun. Um, it's lighthearted. We're, we're, it's, not a, it's not a moment where we're getting down and studying the, the root Greek of a New Testament passage or the Hebrew where we're studying specific words, but it's more of how does this, what we're learning, how does it play out in my life? Right. And how can I make it so that I can share that with someone who doesn't know Jesus so it has meaning to them as well? Yeah. I know when you was in uh, Summersville, I had the one Wednesday night. Well, I had two of them, as a matter of fact. And I went back to a sermon I preached in June about David. Mm -hmm. And had the Bible study. It's amazing how the, it would come back to him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. talked about that last month. Or 
Yeah. You know, and David's a good example. I like David because he he talks about he prayed to praise the Lord in advance. Mm -hmm. Even though he knew he was probably going to stumble tomorrow, he was praising him for what was yep. going to happen. And and you know, one of the things that as a pastor you you can learn from David is. Don't think that you are above That's right. making a mistake. failures, yep. above failure. You know, not saying that we're going to murder anyone or, or right. do anything like that, but know that, yes, you are going to make mistakes, but we serve a God who says, you can still come to me. That's right. And I still love you. That's right. Um, you know, and I think that's one of the things we, we try to really share in our time of worship um, every service we do is that one of the things that I hear people say is, well, how could God love me? I've done this and this and this and this. And I say, well, that doesn't matter. God loves you because he created you. That's right. And, and every service we do, we really want to focus on God's love available to all. That's right. So That sermon that I preached on David, I was talking about coming out of the pits to praise. Mm -hmm. And David done that a lot. Mm -hmm. He'd come out of the low places in life, mm -hmm. in life and move up to praise mm -hmm. God again. Yeah. And, you know, and you can see that throughout Scripture. We have David. Um, you know, Jeremiah was always just seemed to be down in the dumps. Yep. And yet he found ways to to honor and praise God. Peter, who had denied Jesus and, and probably was at the lowest point he'd ever been. Right. And the moment when Jesus says, Peter, feed my sheep, you go, he will use anyone. Oh, yeah, he will. Even if you have let him down, let others down, if, if you hit that low point, God can lift us back up. That's right. Um, many of... The, those who are watching the show, and I'm sure you have heard of the, the poem, The Footprints in the Sand. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, I always say it's a nice poem, and uh, you always have the bookmark or a picture yep. with it on it, and it's this set of footprints. Well, I, I, I'd say my beach does not look that nice. No. My beach, you'll see my body impression where I've fallen down. Yep. You'll see where I've turned around and walked away and where uh, yep. Jesus waited for me and come back. Our beaches are messy. Oh, yeah. But what we learn in here in Sunday school and in our worship and when our time spent with each other is it may be messy, but God, he can clean it up. That's right. He can definitely do a cleaning job. Yep. It. And I know I was talking to, I was on Dr. Greenbrand's program about two months ago, about a month ago now, and we was talking about growing up. Mm -hmm. we, we met in the first grade at the academy school. And uh, as I went through my 20s and my 30s, I wasn't living for God. But it was amazing how some of them scriptures that I learned in vacation Bible school would just pop in my mind sometimes. It's like the seed was there and it was growing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what you learn when you're a kid. Well, uh, I talked last time about... Um when I was at Bowling Green and right. the problems I, what's funny is um, my mom, the question she asked me was, when's the last time you read your Bible? <laughs> I looked around my dorm room and I said, I don't have one. She said, go buy one. <laughs> I went to the bookstore um, that was at the mall and the only Bibles they had were large print. So here I am, this 22 year old guy buying the large print Bible and I go up there. But when I got back to my room, I opened it up. I didn't flip through, I just opened it up and it fell on the prodigal son. Right. And that was the moment I knew God was calling me back. Yeah. And the journey to here started a long time ago, but oh, yeah. the journey to here that day began anew. Right. And it, that's the way it happens. And I know it happened in my life that way and yours. Mm -hmm. Probably a lot of other ministers the same way. Yeah. You know, it... it a lot of people think that ministers' lives are very, if not easy, very dull. Yeah. Um, I think if you talk to a lot of ministers and they tell you their story, you'll find out for many of them, it's not all that different That's right. than other people. That's right. And even today when they've been in, in the ministry and been pastors for a while, you'll find some of the struggles you might have, 
they might be going they through might, too. That's right. So it's, it's, you know, what one of the things that we say is God didn't make us perfect. Nope. God loved us and made us his. That's right. Um, we struggle just the same as anybody else. Oh, we do. We do. And I know if you look in the Bible, some of the apostles, mm -hmm. they had struggles. Great, well, great men in the Bible yeah. had struggles. Well, Paul said he, he prayed that the Lord would take away whatever infliction was upon right. him. And he prayed three times. And the Lord said, I'm not taking that away. Right. We don't know what it was. But something in something. Paul's life was causing him problems. Yep. And God wouldn't take it away. But because of that, Paul was able to minister, minister. in a way he may not have been able to without it. That's right. And it's same today. We, have, mm -hmm. uh, we all have difficulties. But it's a lot easier, I found out, to have the Lord in your side when them difficulties come mm -hmm. than trying to face Him yourself. True. And one of the things that we here at Buchanan Nazarene are big about is don't apologize for what you've gone through. Learn from it. Yep. Forgive. Not only if someone else has done something, forgive yourself. And most importantly, know that God wants to forgive you. That's right. And God will forgive you he if will. you ask Him. Um, we're not here to, one of the big things we always talk about, we're not here to judge anyone. We're not here to make someone feel like their life is, is less because of things they have done. Um, we want people to know that uh, God's love is greater yep, than is. anything we could do. And as long as we have breath, God is still calling us to love Him. You're right. And I know in the past, not in this church, but other churches, people have made a mistake. Mm -hmm. They've fallen. Instead of a Christian picking them up, they shove them down farther. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I, I hope, and I don't, don't think we would, and I pray we won't, but that is not something that right. we, we do here. Um, we really want to, we, we are all about love and forgiveness. Right. Doesn't mean that we, you won't hear about sin. Oh, yeah. Won't hear that, what the, the consequences of sin are. Right. But it does mean that we don't leave you there. That's right. We don't want you to stay in the sin. We want you to know that there is hope. Oh, yes. Um, in a hope. world of darkness, there is light. Okay. Um, so that's important. Uh. Another subject I was thinking about, and mm -hmm. I've seen this before, when people get saved, mm -hmm. they're in church about a month and they kind of fade away. And one reason I see for that is we're not nourishing them. That's true. A lot of times we fail to, because they're just new to Christ, they need to have us help them make, understand the Word of God, but you'll see them for about a month, then they fade away. Yeah. Um, one of the one of the things um, I, I really appreciate about Billy Graham and what he did early on in his ministry, when he was out doing the the revivals and all these things and, and the evangelism, he would go in and, and get people saved and then he'd leave. Mm -hmm. And he said at some point he realized that he was leaving people. I've got you saved, but now what? Yeah. And that's when he started bringing in partnering with churches in the yeah. community to, right. to touch these Take people. These people. Yeah. If we're not doing that, people can say that, but if they're not engaging on, with Christ and the Word on a daily basis, you know, one of the things in Acts 2.42 that it says is they followed the apostles' teaching, right. they broke bread, and they fellowshiped together. Right. In Hebrews, it talks about not ignoring or leave, forsaking the fellowship of believers. Yes. That means whether you've been in church all your life or you've been in church one month, we all bond together and support each other and build each other up. Right. And for, so that means engaging and, and befriending the person who has been there the longest right. and the person who's been there right. the shortest amount of time. And like you said, I believe fellowship is key. Mm -hmm. I know here at the church we have our communion. Mm -hmm. We have our fellowship, especially after church sometimes we have what we call a potluck dinner. Mm -hmm. It's a great way for us to talk to other people within the church. Maybe normally we wouldn't have a chance to if yeah. we didn't meet going out the door. And at least once a year I fire up the grill and everybody gets to oh, watch yes. me cook. <laughs> I'm usually so. standing right there waiting with my plate out waiting for it. <laughs>
Well, Dan, I want to thank you for coming on. I enjoyed this. Thank you, Gary. I did as well. I also want to thank you for letting us use the Church of the Nazarene for, Absolutely. These, for these broadcasts. I want to thank Rodney and Channel 3 for coming out here to do this taping today. And, of course, I want to thank Dr. Greenbrier Allman for affording me the opportunity to host this program for a while. So until next time, this is Reverend Gary Maloney saying, God bless you and good night. Stories of a West Virginia Doctor, written by Dr. Harold D. Allman. A collection of 55 short stories about his experience as a small town doctor in central West Virginia. And tender loving care. Stories from a West Virginia Doctor, volume two, written by Dr. Greenbrier Allman, using videotapes to write 70 additional stories of his father's very colorful life as a small town doctor. They can be found for purchase at Amazon.com and most local bookstores. Tune into Channel 3 Buckhannon for Tender Loving Care with Dr. Greenbrier Allman, where he talks about the connection between Christianity and medicine.